BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Physics Communicating with Waves. Okay, now there's lots of different examples of how we communicate with various types of the electromagnetic spectrum. And for each of the examples in the video, you need to be able to describe it in detail. You need to remember information to show that you've actually learnt stuff about it. Uh, use keywords. I've highlighted some of the keywords in bold and you need to know enough about them to be able to compare them to each other. You know, advantages and disadvantages or just the differences between them. So be able to compare them. What I would suggest you do eventually is make yourself some flashcards. Make a flashcard about each one, for example, Bluetooth, and then make an effort to learn, learn this information. This is good stuff, this is what gets marks, is being able to regurgitate this information. Let's start with satellites, communication satellites. They receive signals from ground stations on the surface of the Earth, and they transmit this information over a very wide area. That's the advantage of satellites, is you can transmit information over a very wide area. They use frequencies from 1 to 40 gigahertz, uh, very much microwaves. Now, interestingly, the, the frequency that goes up to the satellite is different to the downlink frequency. There's the uplink and the downlink frequency. They use two separate antennas. Uh, the reason that they're different is so that they don't interfere with each other. So somewhere inside the satellite, there's a thing called a transponder and that receives the signal, it filters it, filters out any interference, it amplifies it, and then it transmits it using the new frequency. There's lots of different examples of where these devices change the frequency slightly so that the, the two signals don't interfere with each other. Mobile phones, uh, they're called cellular phones because uh, there's a cell and each cell has a transmitter or rather a transceiver which receives and sends signals okay and then the whole country is covered in lots and lots of cells the more populated an area is the the closer the cells will be together and each cell has its own transceiver that receives and sends signals mobile phones use quite a big range of frequencies from 800 megahertz which is 0.8 gigahertz up to 2.6 gigahertz, uh, which is very much microwaves again, 2.6 gigahertz. They are all networked together. The network covers the whole country. And again, each cell uh, changes the frequency slightly to avoid interference. Each cell sends and receives different frequencies to avoid interference. Uh, a network, what is a network? It's a, a bunch of devices linked together. A network may be a wired network, which obviously uses cables, wires, or you can have a wireless network. For example, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are wireless. With Wi-Fi, you need something called a, a router, a Wi-Fi router. And you can have a wi wired network going to your router or a, a well, Wi-Fi is a wireless network. Uh, devices in Wi-Fi networks connect to a local hub or router. And the range of Wi-Fi is from 10 meters to 100 meters. And Wi-Fi and Bluetooth use approximately the same frequencies, about 2.4 gigahertz, which is very close to microwave again. Strictly speaking, radio, but very close to microwave. Bluetooth uh, and infrared devices. Now, one difference is that you don't need a local hub. You don't need a router. Devices can communicate with each other. Your mobile phone can communicate with a printer or with a Bluetooth headset. Your uh, PlayStation controller can communicate with the television or with the, rather with the PS3 or PS4 or whatever. The range of Bluetooth devices is limited. Uh, it's less than Wi-Fi. It's only about 10 meters. 
Uh, Bluetooth devices tend to be portable ones that use batteries um, because basically Bluetooth, its power needs are low. Its power needs are low because it doesn't transmit a huge amount of information and it doesn't have a very big range. Bluetooth is okay for speech and music, but you wouldn't use it for HD video. Okay, you, it, it struggles, it can't carry the same amount of information, but it has lots of other very, very useful applications for Bluetooth. Infrared devices, you can get infrared cables going to a computer, but I'm just going to talk about TV remotes. They have a range of just a few meters and they need a, a clear line of sight to work, but they don't use a great deal of power. Uh, the infrared waves themselves have a very high frequency, but uh, an infrared signal from a remote is just basically a light flashing on and off. It's an, an infrared LED flashing on and off and the frequency of the pulses is only around 40 kilohertz. Okay, so it doesn't send a huge amount of information. Uh, when devices talk to each other, they have to do something called handshaking. If two devices want to connect to each other, either with Wi-Fi or with Bluetooth or whatever, they have to handshake. And that basically involves saying a few short messages they have to say hello to each other. They have to decide how they're going to communicate with each other. And this happens to avoid um, information getting lost or jumbled up. And also, if you send information, it's nice to get some acknowledgement that it has been received. There may also be some security features involved, like passwords and encryption. This is when you, you need a, a kind of a, a code to kind of protect the data so that only certain routers etc can understand it. Now the kind of questions you're going to get are very likely to be the, the six mark questions and be ready to answer them. Here are some examples of the kind of questions you might get. Describe the features of a domestic Wi-Fi network. Uh, devices may link together using Wi-Fi or by Bluetooth. Evaluate both methods. Evaluate means basically say what the advantages and disadvantages are and make a judgment at the end. Uh, before devices can communicate with each other, they must handshake, explain what this means and why it is necessary. Note that I said these are six mark questions. To get six marks, you've got to give six good, intelligent, relevant bits of information, okay? Uh, describe the main features of a mobile phone network. Uh, our mobile phones send and receive signals. What stops these signals from interfering with each other? Uh, electromagnetic waves are used by devices for communication. What different parts of the spectrum are used by different methods? Okay, so to do well on these questions, you need to have learnt some stuff. So get reading your book, have a good look at this video, get some stuff learned.